Hello! Well, let's check out our room! After I adjust the speed again. No, it's fine. <clears throat> Just my imagination. This is the pinnacle of glitch doors in this game. One of the three doors in the game that used to glitch all the time. You unlock the door to your room and go So in. I hope it doesn't crash. I saved, though. Great. So, let's put some stuff in the storage chest we don't need anymore. You don't need the flint. You only need as a thief or a fighter. You put it in the chest. Some more space. This we all need. Okay. Let's explore the town some more. Every time I go through a door, I'm like, oh, don't crash. I have such bad memories of this game. Sadly, it's a great game, but glitchy. I did, I did apply the patches, so I should just remain calm. What's... ooh. This. As you enter the northern part of the town, you hear the sound of a chisel chipping away at a stone block. A man is carving gravestones at one end of the street. Your attention quickly moves from the stone carver to the ominous gothic building in the center of the street. There is definitely something not right about this structure. Yeah. I can tell. There's that hexa thing again. This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. We've seen that before. The dark sign, dark one sign. It has the same symbol. Hmm. Let's have a chat with the grave digger first. You introduce yourself to the grave digger. Me, Igor. Igor. That's kind of cliche, but whatever. What do you have to tell? Building was Adventurers Guild. Uh, no adventurers, no guild. Makes sense. Um. Oh, this day job. Also work graveyard shift. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Uh. Igor dig graves in cemetery. Igor put dead person in grave. Igor cover dead person with dirt. Igor put headstone on grave. Oh, plenty job security around here. Business is piling up! Uh. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Again. So there's a graveyard here. Haven't seen one since the first game. Oh, Igor not hear rumors. Igor not no stranger in town. Igor not no doctor make strange things in lab. Igor not no funny man in inn not funny. Igor not no many things. Igor not hear many things. Thank you. Uh, bad building. No, go there. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. Let's go into the Adventurers Guild. See what we can discover there. Lock the door using the key the Burgomeister gave you. It's pretty deserted, though. Moose. It's a rare example of the deadly Mordavian moose. Distinguishable by its long, fang-like canines. Eh? Someone has strung garlic around its neck, probably in hopes that it will stay on the wall. The moose makes its appearance yet again. Ooh, books. As a magician, we love books. Uh, read books. Which book do you want to read? Well, what do we... Hero. We'll read them all. As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. Okay. There are a series of articles about the land of Mordavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on Fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. Mm -hmm. The Necrotor Ugh. is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Necrotor suck Some ass. Some of the other monsters sound even more to fight, I mean. In the forest lives the Lishi, Lishi, a creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. Okay. You learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered, unmarried woman. Oh. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers, 
They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. Okay. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? Smiley face. Yes, it is. And we I, I actually have that booklet since I bought this game. A uh, brochure. The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how cheesy can you get? That's a different game, though. Creative casting. The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, hmm. and so on. You pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. Cool. But we don't have a frost spell again. You read through the book on spell casting techniques again. It hasn't changed. Okay. Talk foo. This book teaches the ancient oriental art of talk foo. What? How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. Uh. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksul. What's kuksul? Um, move the bookshelf. Nice try. But the bookshelf won't budge. Nope. There is a secret passageway, though, but you can only get there as a thief. Ooh, of course, let's sign our name into the book again. You sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. It's almost become a habit by now. Yup. Um, let's open the desk drawer. That would be a lot easier if the desk had a drawer. Ugh! You tricked me, game. Um... Read the logbook? You read in the adventurer's log about some of the exploits of past adventurers in Mordavia. Prominent among them is the story of Piotr and the Dark One's cult. Hmm. Near the end of the book, this is important. Piotr tells how he led the armies against the Chernovi cult outside the Dark One's cave. That's where we came the in. Fighters were trained soldiers, but the cult members fought like madmen. Suddenly, the cult members changed their forms and became grotesque monsters. Oh. Many of the soldiers panicked and ran. The battle was nearly lost. Then Piotr heard the voice of Irana. Irana! By all my will, I banish you to... Haven't heard the from her in ages. Off. The cult members screamed and ran. Piotr entered the cave and searched for some sign of life. All he could find were the grotesque remains of cult members. The only sign of Irana was her magical staff lying on the ground. Piotr picked it up and left the cave, knowing that Irana was beyond his help. Oh no. Piotr then tells how he brought the staff back to town and placed it in the town square. Oh. A garden of flowers instantly sprang up around it. So that's her staff. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells that he was going to seek out the rituals of the Dark One and destroy them. There are no later entries. So, that's Irana's staff. This is definitely progress. Learned a bunch of good things. We haven't heard of Irana since the first game, so it's nice to see her again, at least referenced. Maybe we'll find out more later. What do we got from all this? Magic! Nice. Always nice. And a bunch of points. Um, we will not go inside there just yet. Instead, we will finish exploring the town. Uh -huh. Oh, an old man. Greet the old man. You greet the old man. Good day. Have you seen my honor? No, sir. Can't say that I have. What's your name? I... I... I am Nikolai. Have you seen my honor? Nope. Honor? Have you seen my honor? Yet. I am looking for honor. Um... No, sir, I have not seen honor. Sorry. Anyway, progress. 
We met a new person. Let's go in here. Whatever this is. Oh, it's a mini game. Uh, don't crash. Ooh, what's this? Um, try this door. No idea where this is. Um, open. Oh! Antwerps? Wow. That's a long time ago. Oh no, you've been Antwerped. <laughs> Fortunately, these are just baby Antwerps, so the attack wasn't fatal. Okay. What about this door? Open. Behind the door is a sort of rat maze, but it's missing the rat, or whatever is supposed to be traversing the maze. So we need to catch the Antwerp, I think. What is this thing? This strange device is labeled Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. Hmm. I wonder if that stands for something. Just be careful, it might be a trap. Ah! The puns! Well then. Um, processor. Gan is a creature you wish to capture and apply the proper bait. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Is it alive? No. You need a shovel, not a trap. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, it's alive. Is it fast? No. Just moves faster. Oh, this is getting us nowhere. Is it alive? Yes. Is it fast? Yes. Is it vicious? No. Is it silly? Yeah. A flying artfark? No. Chocolate mousse? No! Yes, I'm looking for an Antwerp. No, I don't mean a full-sized one. Bouncing baby items are about avocado eaters! Great, but we're gonna try a trap again. Yes. Does it have legs? Yes. More than one leg? Yep. More than two? Yes. More than three? Definitely. It has six legs, you know. Does it have exactly six legs? Yes. Does it look like a cross between an octopus and a squid? Yes. Hexapods mostly eat heroes. Sounds like a good idea to you? No. Well, a pinch a clove of garlic will do. Thanks. Well, we have some avocado right here. You bait the trap with avocado from your sandwich. Avocado was never high on your list of favorite foods anyway. The trap starts working. There you go, Mr. Antwerp. Caught. You've caught an Antwerp. It's simply amazing. Nothing to it. Time to save progress and let's go into this rat maze thing. Open. This is the Antwerp maze. Antwerps are naturally bouncy, so all you have to do is continually rotate the maze until the baby Antwerp bounces over to the key, then out through the exit. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a little tricky though. Oh! Oh, what's my time? Oh, one minute. I should be able to do this in a minute. Oh, no. Messed that one up. Go this way. Oh. No. And out. Congratulations. You've used the baby Antwerp to get Dr. Cranium's laboratory key from the maze. You okay, I gotta stop here. And next video we will go into the lab of Dr. Cranium.